But pants are a little harder to just strip off. So if you see pants that are unusual, let's say they're blue jeans. Sure, blue jeans, but they've got a red stripe going down the side. Or they're blue jeans and they have a, a dragon embroidered on the back of the pants. Try to get those types of things as descriptions. All right, today on Free Field Training, we're gonna be talking about giving a description. How to give a description if you're calling 911 and how to receive a description and not screw the whole thing up if you're a cop and also a little bit about how to ask for a description from somebody if you're a cop or a security guard. Should be very educational for everyone. Now, the sponsor of this video is, of course, Xavier Wells and his book, Expert Witness. In his book, he gives you a bunch of pointers on how to call 911, when to call 911, when not to call 911. Check out that link up there and down below for that video that we did. Everybody really enjoyed when not to dial 911. But one thing he didn't go over in the book especially well was how to give a good, solid description. And that's something that I think should garner a lot more attention, especially if we're going to talk to people about calling the police. Before we get into that, let's pay a few more bills here. Down in the descriptions are links and coupon codes for a bunch of sponsors and affiliates for the channel. Go check those out. Use those links and coupon codes to help me out a little bit. Also, if you're a fan of the channel and you want patches, I have both green field free field training patches and gray on black free field training patches they are sized so that they fit onto the standard velcro patches on jackets and they come in these two different colors so if you have a green jacket or a black jacket and you want one of the patches go check them out there's gonna be a link for that down below or you can go to freefieldtraining.com slash merch so in his book xavier talks about keeping an eye out for people who are acting suspiciously, people that are loitering in areas that people don't normally loiter in, people who are looking in windows, things like that. It gives lots of information for people on an understanding of how to look for things that are suspicious and then call the police about those suspicious things. But what we're lacking is an in-depth look for the public of how to give a really good solid description that the police can use but then to be able to use that description in order to get a good show up and then be able to use that description against that offender in court if they were caught red-handed doing something. Also, for cops, uh, and this is where the free field training section comes in, or security guards, how to get a good description and things that are useful long-term and short-term for descriptions, and then for how to use those from the police or security standpoint in order to find the actual person you're looking for instead of everyone else in the neighborhood that's wearing very similar clothes for the season. So let's get into giving a good description first, since that's probably what I'm gonna title this video as. If you are trying to be a good witness and you're gonna be calling 911 like the focus of the book is, when you call 911, you can give a very good description or you can give a very bad description. And lots of times people give very bad descriptions. I know they're not doing it on purpose. They're not trying to do it on purpose. They give the description, uh, they see somebody running from the scene of a crime, and all they see is a dark figure, and so they say it's a male black wearing all black. This is not a useful description in the vast majority of places in the United States. I know if I go pretty much anywhere in my jurisdiction, and I go looking for a male black wearing all black, I'm gonna find half a dozen within every square city block because that's not a very good description. Now, if you've got questions or comments about this, you should check me out over on Instagram. We're actually live streaming this on Instagram over here and we're gonna be taking comments and questions from those people at the end, Tommy underscore free field training. So how do we give a better description of an offender or a suspect or somebody that we think is suspicious? Well. There's the ideal better description. The way we teach it to people in the police academy and when they come out on the street is we say you want to get uh, approximate age, race, sex, facial features, if they have any tats, facial hair, and then a description of their clothing from top to bottom. I disagree with this on a certain level. I think the ideal description to get is to get at least one, and if somebody was going to give me a description, on the street, this is what I tell people when they want to know. I say, you know what? Get one thing. Focus on just one item, especially if it's a fleeting instant and you're trying to think, how am I going to be able to describe this person later? Pick one item and describe it in detail. So, there's a massive difference between the description of a male black wearing all black or saying it's a person wearing red shoes with a blue logo on the side. A male black wearing all black could be a whole lot of people. 
In my daily life, I run into probably a couple hundred people that could match the description of a male black wearing all black. But if you just tell me it's a person wearing red shoes with a blue logo on the side, I'd have to really go out and look. I'd have to think really hard to, to find a person that's wearing red shoes with a blue logo on the side. That's a really useful description without giving all the rest of this stuff. Some things to think about when you're trying to find those really useful descriptions. Let's talk about our goofy guy that's really easy to spot. Male, long hair. Anything that's unusual about a person. If you've got a female with long hair and it's drifting down, you know, long blonde hair would match the description. But female, long hair doesn't do anything for me. Male, long hair? That sticks out a little more. Uh, facial hair. Some people have facial hair. Some people don't have facial hair. If they have unusual facial hair, you want to notate that. You know, if you're telling me it's a male black with a pencil mustache, well, there's lots of male blacks with pencil mustaches. That's not something that's going to jump out at me. But if you say it's a male Hispanic with a very tight, thin, pencil, penciled out beard that comes around from the edge of his chin to the corners and then a beard that comes around, that's going to stick out a little bit more. But let's talk about, let's, let's get some facial hair descriptions. Let's get unusual descriptions of clothing, especially clothing that has big letters, numbers, sayings, or pictures on them. If you tell me it's a male black wearing all black, that does nothing for me. A male black wearing a red shirt with 47 written on the front or 47 written on the back, that does a lot for me. Uh, pants are normally a better descriptor or shoes than shirts or jackets. People tend to strip shirts or jackets off to avoid the police recognizing them. Sometimes I've even known criminals to wear like a bright yellow or bright red coat and then strip it off directly after the crime has occurred or they wore a black hoodie and then strip it off and have a yellow shirt on underneath. But pants are a little harder to just strip off. So if you see pants that are unusual, let's say they're blue jeans. Sure, blue jeans, but they've got a red stripe going down the side. Or they're blue jeans and they have a, a dragon embroidered on the back of the pants. Try to get those types of things as descriptions. Uh, shoes, just pick one unusual thing about the shoes. Let's say they're, they're black shoes, but they've got red toe caps. That's something unusual that most people are not going to notice, but if you give it to a copy, say, it's, it's a, a male white with long hair and in black shoes with red toe caps, that's an awesome description. I'm going to be able to find that easily if I see it. So shirts or jackets, backpacks, and uh, numbers or marks on any of these items. Backpacks are a good one because lots of times people are unwilling or unable to shed the backpack quickly, uh, especially if it's an odd color backpack. You know, you're looking for a male with a green backpack, and if we find a green backpack sitting on the ground, maybe we'll recover the stuff that we're looking for. Uh, gloves, especially rubber gloves, especially in the summer, especially clothing that is out of season or out of style. If you've got somebody that's running from a house or running from a burglary or running from a armed robbery or anything else, and they're wearing rubber gloves, that's kind of the blue rubber gloves are kind of going to stick out. Uh, other things to give, if you're giving this, they say, what did the guy look like? And you don't really remember what the person looked like, but you know the car they were in. That's really helpful, especially if you're good with cars. You tell me it's a red Ford Taurus with a male white in it with long hair, that's a pretty good description. Uh, the direction, and if you're on scene, if you're a cop or security guard and you're on scene of that incident, and you're asking someone which direction they went, don't, don't get a north, south, east, or west. Have them point. If you're a dispatcher, you're trying to give a description to dispatch. Instead of trying to guess which way north, south, east, or west is, even if you think you know, tell them what general thing they're heading toward. Oh, it's a male white driving a red Taurus, and he's, he's driving toward 147th Street from my house. Cool! I know where 147th Street is at. I hope you know where 147th Street is at. And instead of trying to guess that it's south of where you're at, if you just tell me he's heading that direction or heading toward the hospital or heading toward the cemetery or heading uh, toward uh, Pete's Warehouse, whatever, give me a direction toward a major landmark in the area and I'm going to be able to find him a lot easier. If you see the person running and they're running toward Jewel Osco, say he was last seen running toward Jewel Osco, don't say east or west and please don't ask people which direction by primary directions because the vast majority of people don't know and if they think they know, they screw it up half the time. I've, I've even done that in areas that I knew. If they're on a bike, bike descriptions can be easy for people. Well, I didn't get a good look at him. He, he was wearing a hoodie and it was cinched around his face, but he's riding a red and blue bike and he's heading toward Jewel Osco. That's a great description. Uh, are they local? And this is a great one for when you're interviewing somebody and it's, it's getting to the point where you're pretty sure that you're not going to catch them immediately, like you're not going to catch them running from the scene. Have you seen this person before? Is this person local? Do you know where they hang out at? 
So let's look at long-term descriptions. If you're a cop or security guard and you're trying to get information from people about an offender, one important question to ask is, do you know this person? Because you'd be surprised how many people will give you, they'll give the dispatcher a description of a male black with a red shirt with a 47 on it wearing white shoes with red toe caps, but they neglect to mention that it's their brother that we're looking for. Ask them if they know the person. Do you know the person? Do you know them from the area? Do you know them from family? Are they a friend of yours? How do you know this person? Who is this person to you is an awesome way to ask that. Uh, if they don't know the person, age, race, facial features, tattoos, especially facial or neck or hand tattoos, hand, tattoos that are in unusual places for most people. Uh, if they know his street name, oftentimes they'll say, do you know their name? No, I don't know their name, man, but I know him from the neighborhood. Well, do you know his, you know his street name for him? Oh, yeah, they call him Crocodile. Why? He's got a crocodile tattooed on his neck. Okay, well, that's a really good description. How many dudes... I can go around and ask all the hookers in town, hey, you know where Crocodile's at? And then they're probably going to know the guy, especially if it's because he's got a crocodile on his neck. That's the type of thing that kind of sticks out. Uh, smell, you'd be surprised. Some people just have a, have a smell. You know, if the person smells like a 55-gallon drum of warm piss, I think that's probably going to stick out a little bit. So you might even be able to smell what the person smells like, especially if it's a battery. And they say, oh, the dude, some guy came up and, he, and he, he pounded the living crap out of me as I was coming out of my car, and he just stunk like vodka. Well, if you find somebody that vaguely matches that description, falling down in the middle of the street stinking like vodka, good chance that might be the guy. Even the FBI might call that a clue. If they do say that they know the person, it's their brother, their uncle, friend of a friend, somebody they met at a party, somebody that they were on a party line with, or whatever else. Now I'm showing my age. Uh, you ask them their name, the person's name, the date of birth, how old they are. If you have a telephone number for them, sometimes that comes in handy. We can look those up in databases. Real big ones right now, internet names. If somebody has an internet handle that they go by, you only know them by that handle. Oh, I, I met them on Tinder, or I met them on Craigslist or whatever, and they have an internet handle for that. Get that, because that's something that we can work on later on in order to get a good description of the person and find who it is that we're talking about. Now, once you've given a good description, uh, you're a security guard or you're a cop seeing a crime occurring, or you're a member of the public who's calling 911 and the dispatcher's trying to get that information, get to the computer, get the other one to give it to me, or to you if you're a cop, we're going to get that information. Now, for cops, here's some things that aren't often taught at the police academy. That's why I said stick around if you're a cop for this. Especially if you're new. I get lots of questions from people on the channel, lots of emails from people. How do I get better self-initiated field activity? How do I make better cases? Here's how you get better cases when you're trying to find somebody out on the street. For cops, disregard, if possible, things like dark, male black, possibly an XYZ type of car. When things happen at night, very often, uh, people see something happen, and they call it in, and they will say, it was a male black wearing all dark clothing. And then later on down the road, I find out it's a male Hispanic or a male white, and the guy was actually wearing bright blue pants. This is because when it's dark out, everything looks black. That's just the way it is. So don't get really hung up. You don't completely disregard. So if possible, try to get out of your mind in concrete terms that the person I'm looking for is definitely going to be a black male because the caller described the person that stole the bike as a black male. It's entirely likely, especially at night, that it's going to be pretty much any other race of person, especially if they didn't get a good look at their face. Or if they don't know whether it's, it's really a man or a woman. I've had that before, too. People call in a black male wearing all black, stealing their bike, and it turns out it's a Hispanic female that just happens to be wearing all black. But it's nighttime, they can't see really well, and when people can't see things and everything's dark in front of them, oftentimes they'll... They'll put their own biases into the description that they give. And we need to be able to see through that bias and find the things that we can actually latch onto and use as a good description, which is why I always tell people, look at the shoes. They've got something unusual about their shoes. Even if, if you could see that it's a black shoes with a black Nike swoosh on it, that helps me a whole lot more than male black and all black. But try to look past those things when you're looking at people that you're seeing on the street and try to see from the, from the perspective of a caller, how would they see this person? You know, the Hispanic female wearing all black, riding a bike down the street, away from the call that I'm getting with it's a male black and all black that just stole a bike, from the caller's perspective, especially riding away, that could be the same person. And sometimes if the bike matches the description, hey, you've got a good idea on that person. Don't 
think you're going to screw the case up because the caller said it was a male black, but you, you stopped a Hispanic female. These are things that if we're articulate and we know our job well enough, we can explain in court later. I'm sure we'll get into the comments about court proceedings. Notice the look. See if they fit. Now, very often, I get the look from people on the street. I will just be driving my marked car down the road and people will give me this look as I drive past, or as they drive past, or they walk past. That's the look. That frightened stare while looking at a uniformed cop in a marked car. Now, the look is not a reason to stop somebody all on its own. Obviously, if you don't know that already, obviously it's not a reason to stop them all on its own. But if you're getting the look from somebody while you're responding to a crime in progress and the description is coming out, when you lock eye contact with that person, look at the rest of them. See if they fit the description. Because more often than not, they do. And then you end up with a good show up and good solid evidence later on down the road. The look is not uh, evidence per se, but it is something that uh, can direct you toward where evidence might be at. Uh, understand, we talked about this a little before, that people shed clothing. So you're going to get a description of a male black in all black uh, wearing a hoodie uh, tight around his face. And when you get to the area that you're going to be looking for this person in, it might be a male black with no shirt on and black pants and black shoes. Uh, this comes in really handy when you get a description like this, where somebody has the red shoes with the blue logo on it or whatever. You get a good description of the shoes. They say it's, it's red and yellow Jordans. So you got the guy with red and yellow Jordans or red and blue Jordans, and they say it's a male black wearing all black but with red and blue Jordans. And when I get out there, you get a male black with black pants, red and blue Jordans, and no shirt on or a yellow shirt on. Does that person match the description? Yes, he does, because all he did was ditch a jacket or a long sleeve shirt that was over it. So keep that in mind, uh, especially backpacks, things like that. People will give descriptions of, of oddball things. When it's stuff that can be shed, it's really helpful to, to keep that in mind that you know, they might look different than what the description strictly was because they can shed articles of clothing. <laughs> Don't ask what color the hat was of the one-legged man in the fur coat. Listen, if somebody gives you a really good description, you're driving around the area that that person's in, you're, you're looking in the area they were supposed to have run, and the description is good. It's a male white with a Fu Manchu, long hair, wearing a red shirt with 47 on it, blue jeans with red stripes down the side, white Jordans with red toe caps. Do not drive past that person and then get on the air, eat up airtime, asking the officer who's on scene, hey, did they mention anything about him having a green hat? Dude, you're wasting everybody's time. You know, if you're asking that question over the air about, did they ask what, did they say what color hat they had? Did they say they had yellow shoes? Do they match the description or not? This is a pretty good description. Do they match the description? Because if they match the description and you're asking those questions, all you're doing is trying to find a reason not to stop the person. Well, why did you drive around looking for them in the first place if you didn't want to stop the person? Don't ask silly questions, right? Because there's no if 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 they knew the guy had a yellow hat, I would have did. I would have told you the guy. They said the guy had a yellow hat. It's shenanigans. Don't don't do this stuff. Right? Especially if you trust the person that's giving you the information. If you trust the dispatcher, you trust the cop that's giving you the information, don't then have them interrogate the victim about whether this person had a yellow hat or not, because they're not going to know. If they knew that, they probably would have told them to start with. Uh, don't get too hung up on height and weight. Uh, very often I see this in books, uh, criminal justice books especially. They say you want to get a good height and weight on the offender. Let me tell you something. In real life, most people are terrible judges of height and weight. Almost everybody who watches this channel and then sees me in real life goes, holy crap, are you short? And I tell people all the time, I am five foot two and 200 pounds. And then they see me in real life and they go, dude, you're really short. I'm like, yeah, I'm fat too. Did you think I was lying about this? Who goes on the internet and tells people they're five foot two? But they're all surprised and they, they see me all the time. They watch me all the time. They hear me say it all the time. And they still, still don't realize what height I am. I have people all the time really surprised when I stand back to back with them in the station. I'm like, no, I'm the shortest cop that works here. And they're like, no, there's no way. You've got, you've got to be taller than, uh, than this chick. And then we stand back to back and look, look at that. She's taller than me. They go, oh, I, I would never would have thought that. And these are people that have known me for 10 years. I'm not saying don't take height and weight into account, 
But there's a huge difference between seeing somebody who's six foot five or four foot eleven. If the caller says they're really, really tall, that's an important description. If they say they're really, really tall and really, really thin, that's important. If they say they're over six feet tall and they're 400 pounds, that's a good description. But if you have somebody that's, they say, oh, I, I think he's about 5'8", and you're 5'8", and, you, and you stop some guy, but he's 5'10". Dude, a couple inches? You, you, you don't argue about a couple inches on a description. And, and with weight, people are terrible at guessing weight. Absolutely horrible at guessing weight. I've had people tell me, oh, he had to be at least 500 pounds. And you see the guy, and he's like 300, and it turns out to be him. Horrible guessing weight. So don't get, don't get hung up on, on the weights that people are. Try to see holistically what is this gonna, what does would this person look like to the victim of a crime? Does this person that I'm seeing match the description of what the person told me from the perspective that person would have? Just like courts look at our actions based upon oh, what a reasonable officer would have done or thought or seen given the circumstances, given their training and experience, we have to look at the descriptions that people give us and the descriptions of what direction they're going and what they're driving and all of that, we have to see it through the eyes of the uninitiated person, the person who doesn't do this every day, the person who isn't calling 911 all the time, the person who didn't go to the police academy. You have to think, if it was my mom giving that description, if it was my dad giving them that description, if it was my brother or my sister giving that description, who have completely unrelated jobs, would this person look like what they would give a description of? And if the answer is yes, then that's a good street stop. It's just that simple. Actually, it seems rather complicated now that I look at it. So that's all I have for my presentation. I'm sure I missed some things that are going to be glaringly obvious to other people. And hopefully they brought them up on the Instagram live stream. We're going to take some of the comments and questions from the Instagram live stream now here. It's uh, almost 2 o'clock in the morning. So I don't know how many of them are going to be on, how many topical comments and questions they're going to have. But we're going to pull them off of here. And we're going to see if we have anything really cool. And then uh, we're going to wrap this up. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here... Why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made? Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.